السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته boys and girls respected elders أهلا وسهلا ومرحبا مية مرحبا في مدرسة تي في شو أمسات حمزة today I'm here to teach you إن شاء الله تعالى so many interesting things I'm a teacher from Medina سات حمزة and today إن شاء الله تعالى we will be learning boys and girls names of Allah and we have a story segment story for you guys inspirational story story that will change your life إن شاء الله then we have a Tajweed lesson and today we are learning Surah Quraysh, boys and girls. For those of you who wish to recite, make sure you call me in early so I know that you're well prepared and ready to recite. Call me in early so you get your chance to recite inshallah ta'ala. We have a WhatsApp number. I'm going to keep up this number on the screen. Uh, for you, I'm going to bring up this number again later on. We have a storyline number, WhatsApp number. If you're watching me somewhere outside UK, you're more than welcome to dial the number on the WhatsApp. Uh, the WhatsApp number and contact us, just like you just added you anyone's number on WhatsApp. Add the number, inshallah ta'ala, and start. I see a comment, someone is asking, has the show started? When the show started, yes, boys and girls, we're live on YouTube, we're live on Facebook, Iman Channel app, and for those of you watching us on TV, ahlan wa sahlan. Boys and girls, I'll be interacting with your comments there on YouTube, and I'll be asking you some questions, and if you answer, you're going to get a badge. I'm super excited to go straight to our first segment because we are going to learn about Allah Azza wa Jal and the more we learn about Allah, the more we get close to Him, the more we can love Him, the more we can... Let's go. Straight to the segment first. Boys and girls, Bismillah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ahlan wa sahlan. I'm going to start this segment with a story. Sad story, but I don't want you guys to feel sad. Yes? Personal story. See, once uh, I was somewhere, and there was a lot of grown-ups. And one of the grown-ups said, Hamza, why don't you go get me a cold glass of water? Now, I have to admit, I was quite a naughty boy at that age. Like, I used to listen but not listen, listen and not do. But that specific time, particular time, because there were other people on the table. I wanted to really do what they asked me to do. So I go to the kitchen. And I find water, but I don't find cold water. So I said to myself, you know what, I'm going to go upstairs. There's a kitchen upstairs. Uh, there was two kitchens. I'm going to go upstairs, find ice, drop ice in the glass, fill it with water, bring it. I wanted to do my best. So I went upstairs, did what I had to do. Couldn't find uh, an... Uh, an ice that's like it wasn't fully ice, it was half ice, but anyway, put it, did it. And I bring the glass and I got told off. Say to me, Hamza, you're always playing around. And I, 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 I wanted to say something like, it took you so long. No. I said, but, and I couldn't say a word. Now that's quite unfair, isn't it? I mean, I was thinking in that moment, who would know that I was trying to do my best? No one is, I can't even say anything. But, did you know that there was someone who knew what I was doing and he knew my intention and he will reward me for it? And that is Allah Azza wa Jal. Now I'm pretty sure that as you go through life, a lot of similar situations will happen to you. Someone will say to you, can you do this? And you say, I can do the best. And you take that work from them. And you're supposed to do your best. Something happens, weather change, huh? You toe, uh, you hit your toe on the edge of the bed, and then something happens, something happened, and then you just couldn't deliver as you wanted to deliver. You wanted to do this thing, you wanted to do it perfectly. But just what happened, things change and now you couldn't. And so you do your I mean. You drag it, you just do the work. You couldn't do the best, but you wanted to. Now you do that, and now you're gonna do this, and then now you're gonna try to convince this person. Look, I really want to do my best, but, and this person will say, yeah, 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 we know it. Or oh, you always say that. Yeah, everyone can say that. 
quite, quite disappointing, right? It happens, it happens, it happens. You really wanted to give it your best, but what can we say? So for that reason, today I'm going to teach you a name of Allah, and that is Al-Alim, Allah Azza wa Jal is the all-knowing. Even when people don't know, even when people ignore, even when people pretend like they care, but they don't, Allah cares because He knows. Allah knows, Allah knows, and He knows more than you, more than everyone. You know that you have that thing in your heart, but then you can't express it. You have that thing in your heart, you have the thing in your mind, you want to express it, you want to say it to other, but it's just like others, people don't get it. People don't get it. So your mom asks you to make something, you make something, you bring it, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> the tray, <laughs> everything falls on the carpet and then you get told off. But what about that good intention you had? What about that? Well, Allah Azza wa Jalla knows He's the all-knowing and He will reward you for it. Boys and girls, in the name of Allah, Al-Alim, the more you understand it, the more your life becomes full of satisfaction, full of, um, how can you say, Ex less expectation from others because you know Allah is the one who is watching. So, hear me out. Allah's knowledge is comprehensive and extends to all that is seen and unseen. People cannot see your intention. People don't know what's in your heart. So when people see something coming from you, they might misunderstand it. I'm writing the word of Allah, uh, name of Allah Al-Ali. Guys, write the name of Allah. So people will judge you according to what they see. People will base their judgment, their opinions on what they see. And it is quite a big possibility that it is absolutely wrong. And you know what? We all do that. It happens. You see someone doing something and it's quite obvious that they didn't do good work. You're not going to lie to them and say it's good work. But only Allah knows what's in your heart. So that's why Allah Azza wa Jal, huh, His knowledge, it comprehends what you see, what you don't see. Apparent and hidden. Present, pr present and future, near and even far. Now this is quite interesting. And I want you to imagine. You know sometimes you say, oh, I wish I could see the future. You don't. You, you can't. If you were able to see the future, if you're able to remember everything that happened in the past, that's actually not good for you. I mean, imagine if all of a sudden, in a moment, you can remember all the bad things happen in your life. How you, you're telling me that's good for you? Imagine in a moment you can see, huh, all the scary things that are gonna happen in your future, all the things that you don't want to happen, they would. Quite overwhelming, isn't it? It can become very stress hard. You might become, hmm? Oh ah, yeah, you might be, get scared. You're like, oh no, 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 no. Ah, ah. You become full of fear. But you see, Allah Azza wa Jal, it's from His wisdom that He knows everything and then He keeps it to Himself. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. His knowledge proceeds and He is intuitively aware of all the things, SubhanAllah, even before they happen. He is the knower of all details and nothing goes unnoticed or unrecorded. This is beautiful, boys and girls. The more you read this, the more you understand huh, that Allah Azza wa is al alim the more you will connect to Him. The more you will be able to realize that, you know what? I forget, but Allah doesn't forget. Something happens to you, all of a sudden, you don't know what to do, you don't know how to handle it. Make sure that you remind yourself that Allah knows that this is going to happen. And He's witnessing. SubhanAllah. Quite incredible. We look into Quran and we find the name of Allah Al Ali mentioned there. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qalu Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka anta al alim al hakim. They said, exalted, are you? We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. Indeed, it is you who is knowing. You, it is who, you Allah who is the wise, Allahu Akbar. So everything you know is from the mercy of Allah. He taught you. And whatever you don't know, sometimes it's good for you not to know a lot of things. And boys and girls, I'm going to make this last point, which is going to be very interesting. By the way, thank you very much, Saliha. Beautiful. Rabbukum a'lamu bima fi nufusikum. Your Lord knows what is in your heart. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. Well done, Salih. That's a beautiful example. That's from Surah Al-Isra. And last point that I would like to mention. Sometimes we don't even know what we want. We don't even know what we know. We think we know something, but we don't. We don't understand it. Sometimes we ask Allah, we ask Allah for something that we don't know if it's even good for us. But Allah is Al-Alim. He knows. So Allah Azza wa Jal will do things accordingly. Isn't that beautiful, boys and girls? So when next time you ask Allah, you say, Oh, Alim, the one who knows everything. Help me in this situation. Teach me this. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Boys and girls, a short break, inshallah ta'ala. We will be back. We will continue. Come back after the break for story. Salaam <laughs> Welcome back, boys and girls, to Madrasa TV show once again. I'm Musa Hamza, and we're learning a lot of interesting things, boys and girls, after learning the name of Allah Azza wa Jalla Al Alim. We are going to go to our next segment and learn a story. A beautiful story. Before we go to the story, inshallah ta'ala, let me remind you one more time, our next segment is going to be Tajweed segment. For those of you who wish to call and recite, call me in early so you get a chance, inshallah ta'ala, to recite, call me in early so you make, well, I want to make sure you get a chance to recite. So call me in early. Also, we have a recite and reflect segment. I'll be listening to your recitations and giving you 
feedback on your recitation. So make sure you do that, inshallah ta'ala. Number is going to be on the screen. I'm going to bring up this number later on for you so you can call me in. Let's go to... So, well, before we go to the story, guys, for those of you live on YouTube, hit the like and share button right now. Hit the share button right now, boys and girls, absolutely free. Hit the share button and let's share this, inshallah ta'ala. Share on a group, Telegram, WhatsApp, wherever you can, or copy and paste the link to anyone you want them to watch the show. Just send them the link. Bismillah. <laughs> Which companion's story we were learning last time? MashaAllah, tabarakallah, Zayan, may Allah bless you. He was Abdullah ibn Abbas. Abdullah ibn Abbas. He was only 13 years old when the Prophet passed away. He got to spend 13 years with the Prophet, 13 years only. Now pay attention. Pay attention. A lot of time, a lot of 13 years old don't know what to do. They think if their mom asked them to wash the plate, they just ate in, it's a bit too much for them. They think that if you get, they get asked to clean their room, that this is going to... Guys, come on. Bismillah. <laughs> Let's learn this story because this story is very interesting. Now we're going to learn further more about this Sahabi. Young Sahabi, 13 years old, and I know a lot of you will be able to relate to this story. As Abdullah ibn Abbas' knowledge grew, so did his fame. Allahu Akbar. You see, first he seeked knowledge and then he became famous. Nowadays, everyone wants to become famous and they don't know what to do. You know how many times <laughs> I've seen videos on social media? Huh? What to talk about? <laughs> this is very, very funny. People don't know what to talk about, but they still want to be famous. Astaghfirullah. Pay attention. Mishraq ibn al-Ajda said of him, he said about Abdullah, whenever I saw Ibn Abbas, pay attention, I would say, he is the most handsome of men. Allahu Akbar. Whenever he spoke, whenever he spoke, I would say he is the most, Allahu Akbar, eloquent of men. The way he spoke. And whenever he held a conversation, I would say he's the most knowledgeable of men. Guys, pay attention to the, to, the, to the last two points. When he spoke, he spoke eloquently. When he had conversation, he was very knowledgeable. Means he, he knew a lot of things. You see, the young age is very, very critical and important age for you to learn a lot of good things. Now, rather than going on internet, run, learning random things, you have Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet, the best knowledge. You learn that, you memorize that. You know, so many people, age of seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, in their teenage, these years, they memorize Quran. You're learning the best of knowledge out there. Not information, knowledge, pure knowledge. You memorize that. And so when you are in your 20s, 30s, when you speak, you're speaking, about Quran, knowledge, the real knowledge, Allahu Akbar. So that is what Abdullah ibn Abbas became because of how, he, how serious he was when it came to learning Quran and other things. The Khalifa Umar ibn al-Khattab often asked his advice on important matters of state and described him as the young man of maturity, Allahu Akbar. The young man of Maturity, Allahu Akbar. Boys and girls, pay attention to these words. Hmm? Young but mature. Ha. Ah, the word mature. As I said, this word. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? I'm laughing in my head. Because nowadays, this word, oh, be yourself. No, 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 do whatever you want to do. Well, how on earth would you become mature then? Huh? Maturity. You've got to learn how to be mature. How to behave. How to speak. How to carry yourself. Yes, you learn that, inshallah ta'ala, when you become a mature person, inshallah. Said Ibn Abi Waqqas described him when, with these words. Yeah, now, boys and girls, we're talking about Umar radiallahu an. The person the Prophet said about Umar radiallahu an, if there was a Prophet after me, it would have been Umar. We're talking about Sa'ad Ibn Abi Waqqas. These are, the, these are Sahaba. And Abdullah Ibn Abbas, he's a young lad. What did he say? I have never seen someone who was quicker in understanding, 
who had more knowledge and greater wisdom than Ibn Abbas. Allahu Akbar at that young age. Guys, wisdom and understanding are two different things. Huh? Now I'm speaking. <laughs> As I say this, a lot of you find mathematical formulas hard, difficult. Boys and girls, 1,600 plus sayings of the Prophet ﷺ, he memorized them. He memorized the Quran, memorized so many other things. Mm. Are you guys with me? I have seen Umar call upon him to discuss difficult problems in the presence of veterans of Badr from among the Muhajireen and Ansar. So when all these big people are there, Umar will call this young person to discuss. Ibn Abbas would speak and Umar would not disregard what he had to say, Allahu Akbar. Now I see a lot of you, subhanAllah, those of you who are young, mm -hmm. you might not have uh, th these moments when your elders are discussing something with you or talking to you about something or asking your opinion about something. And to be very fair, a lot of times you don't really know any better. A lot of times, the things that you were supposed to know, huh? like for example, you, you have a lot of, you have parents, they might not know how to use internet. Now you know how to use internet, but please, please, what good have you learned from this internet? Your parents don't have access to it, they don't know how to use internet, they don't know a lot, a lot of things, right? You do. Please tell me, please enlighten me what things that you know. Hmm? Well, let's not ask this question. Shall we skip this question? Let's skip this question. Yalla. Next. And this is going to be a very important one. In these, it is these qualities which resulted in Abdullah ibn Abbas being known as the learned man of this ummah. Allahu Akbar. The learned, the learned man of this ummah. Allahu Akbar. So much knowledge. Yeah? And look what it, what it made him. Allahu Akbar. He learned Quran, spent time with the Prophet among the Sahaba. Look what he came out with. A'udhu Billah. And I see sometimes, A'udhu Billah. Inshallah, not you guys. I see sometimes some kids after school time. The way they are walking, the way they are talking. And I say to myself, I don't know what on earth they learned at school. Wallahi, the way they talk, the way they talk to each other. Hmm? Man! My God, it scares me sometimes. On a bus stop, two young boys, uh, uh, young kids talking to each other, saying words that I just wish I never heard them. Young! Coming back from school. Mm. Subhanallah. Abdullah was not content to collect knowledge. He felt he had a duty to the ummah to educate those in search of knowledge and the general message of the Muslim community. Allahu Akbar. He felt the responsibility there. So you don't just learn for the sake of learning. Oh, I'm going to school because my mom sent me to school. I'm just, I'm just going to school because my dad. You have a responsibility. huh? So many millions of people around the country paying and all of that, the system. So you can sit in a class and learn something from a teacher. And then you come back, oh, I hate math. Okay. So what do you like? I like science. Okay. Tell me. Oh, I, I don't know. Subhanallah. Huh? Responsibility. He turned to teaching and his house became a university. Yes, a university. In the full sense of the word. Now listen to this. With experts teaching, but with the difference that there was only one teacher, Abdullah ibn Abbas. So it was like a university and he's the only teacher because he knew more than everyone else. There was an authentic huh? Report, response. To Abdullah's classes, Allahu Akbar, enthusiastic respond to Abdullah's classes. Listen to this. One of his companions described a typical scene in, in front of his house. Now listen to this. I saw people covering on the roads leading to his house until there was hardly any room in front of his house. I went in and told him about the crowd of people and his door and he said, get me water of wudu. He performed wudu before he started teaching, said and said, Go out and say to them, whoever wants to ask about Quran and its pronunciation, let them enter. This I did and people entered until the house was filled. Whatever he was asked, Abdullah was able to explain and then even provide additional information to what was asked. Then to his student, he said, make way for your brothers. Allahu Akbar. 
So class after class. Let's come back after the break, inshallah ta'ala, and continue this. Stay with us, come back after the break. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, welcome back boys and girls. Now we're supposed to start a Tajweed class, inshallah ta'ala. We will be starting our Tajweed segment very soon. Before we do that, let me just go back and quickly continue or finish our story. <laughs> Abdullah ibn Abbas, his house was like a university. People outside his house, crowd of people. Yeah, there's no space for people to walk. So many people who want to come and learn from him. So what he did, he performed wudu. And then he asked for people, huh? he asked uh, for, for this person. This person was responsible, uh, one of the companions. So, so one of the companions, he asked them, okay, go out and ask people who want to learn Quran only, let them in. So they came in and they learned, they asked, they asked, they learned. And then he said, make way for your brothers. Then to me, he said, go out and say, whoever who wants to ask about Quran as an interpretation, let them enter. Again, the house was filled and Abdullah explained and provided more information than was requested because he knew a lot. And so it continued. 
with groups of people coming in to discuss law, halal and haram, inheritance, law, Arabic language and poetry. Allahu Akbar. Wasn't God. This was a young Sahabi. Look at how much he knew. And look at the impact he had on people because of what he knew. Huh? Subhanallah. Nowadays you'll have people who think they're learning something. They think they're learning some knowledge. Learn, make them arrogant. Walk around, tell everyone, I know, I know this, I know that. This is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, I'm right. Subhanallah. Look what made him, what real knowledge made him into Allahu Akbar. Yeah? And look at how open he was for sharing that knowledge with others. Allahu Akbar. I knew some of the Quran teachers in Masjid al-Nabawi. They would sacrifice their time, their personal time for Quran. After teaching the whole day, Masjid and Nabawi, I think still, yeah, uh, the, the old, the new masjid will close, only the front of the masjid will be open 24 7. Masjid will be closing. They will grab a chair, sit outside the door, and finish with the students, finish listening to their students. They felt responsible because they learned things, because they knew things. Allahu Akbar. Look what Quran makes you, knowledge, real knowledge makes you. It transforms your life, it makes you someone else. It, Changes everything. Allahu Akbar. So that was Abdullah. Yeah? Ibn Abbas. And that was people, serious people who wanted to learn from him. They wouldn't mind waiting outside his house until a specific group of students finish. And they would enter and learn. And these people will go. Then there will be a next group of students. And on and it's like a university. Allahu Akbar. Look at one man can change the lives of so many people. One knowledgeable person. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us all knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge that will really and truly bring us closer to Allah. So knowledge that will, that will enable us to see the reality of things, to understand the reality of things. Say Ameen. Barakallahu feekum. Boys and girls, we'll continue with the story tomorrow. It was a really interesting story. And now it's time for us to go to our Tajweed segment. <laughs> Today we'll be learning Surah Quraysh, boys and girls. After we learn this Surah, inshallah ta'ala, we'll give a chance to everyone to call and recite. Lines are open for those of you who want to recite. Call me in. Call me in early, guys. If you want to recite, if you want to feedback on your recitation, call me in early. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajeeb. Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. لإله في قريش إله فيهم رحلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البيت الذي أطعمهم من جوع وآمنهم من خوف now, I've highlighted there, green color is what we call whispering letters, barakallahu feekum. We call them whispering letters. So let's have a look at them. Quraysh, similar to when we say Bismillah, and then we say Rahman Rahim. Rihlatash, wassayf, sayf, wassafa, yeah, bait. We call these whispering letters, we whisper these letters. When they are silent. Now, I'll give you a quick example here. The letter might not be silent, bayti, but when we stop at a letter in Quran, it becomes silent, and so we are reading it with the whispering sound. Letter, whispering letters, the, the ones that are highlighted here, they have to be silent letters for us to whisper them, inshallah. Boys and girls, I heard the phone ring in, so we're gonna go straight to inshallah ta'ala our recite and reflect segment. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Boys and girls, once again, call in early, call in now if you want to recite. We'll take straight away our first caller. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Maryam Khan? Hello, I'm good and how are you? I'm very well. You're the first caller of the day. Go ahead. I'll be the 
الله تبارك الله والناس دي اللي ربلوا أطعمهم من جوع وأمنهم من خوف نوتيس ده well done ما شاء الله عليك next caller next caller she gets to go by السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام who's calling عبد الله Abdullahi, how are you today? I'm fine. Abdullah, make sure you're not on a loudspeaker and come closer to your phone and go ahead. Okay. Um, Masha Allah Tabarak Allah. Let's say it together. Alavi Alavi. Now, Atoamahum Atoamahum. Better. Mir Juri Juri Wamanahum. Wa'amanahum. Min khawf. Min khawf. You got a silver badge. Well done, mashallah, mashallah, tabarakallah alayk. Well done. Let's see who's next. Assalamu alaykum. Wa alaykum assalam. Who's calling? Muhammad Padia. Mashallah, how are you today, Muhammad? Muhammad, go ahead. Huh? I'm calling oh. for, from South Africa. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. MashaAllah, Muhammad from South Africa, guys. Can you read Surat Quraysh? She. Go ahead. Bismillah ما شاء الله تبارك الله What a beautiful recitation from South Africa Muhammad, you gotta go back I'm gonna give you feedback after Well, sure Before we go on a break, guys Shita'i Every time you see Ahmed At least four counts Shita'i Boys and girls, after a short break We will continue with the rest of the reciters For those of you who haven't called in yet Call me in if you want to recite after a short break, I'm going to show you some beautiful notes, drawings from our students. So make sure you come back. Salam alaikum. <laughs>
Assalamu alaikum, welcome back boys and girls to Madrasa TV show. This is going to be our final segment. Call it Recite and Reflect segment. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Boys and girls, once again, for those of you who wish to call and recite, make sure you call me in right now, inshallah. Lines are open, we have a WhatsApp number, we have a study line number. You can call us on either one of these numbers and recite. If you recite, I'll give you feedback on your recitation and inshallah ta'ala you will earn a badge. We'll go to our next caller. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Ustaz Hamza? I'm very well. How are you, Mira? Good, alhamdulillah. Ahlan wa sahlan. Tafadali. Go ahead. Okay, insha'Allah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytan. an extraordinary badge boys and girls i've got a few more extraordinary badges left let's see who gets to uh, win those extraordinary badges next call assalamu alaikum muhammad wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh how are you Ustad hamzat very well and how are you muhammad i am fine alhamdulillah hayak allah ya muhammad tafaddal okay inshallah a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الإلاف قريش إلافهم رحلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البيت الذي أطعمهم من جوع وآمنهم من خوف صدق الله العظيم Another extraordinary sighter, mashallah Next we got Ali and Ibrahim Assalamu alaikum It's Amina, assalamu alaikum Wa alaikum assalam Welcome Amina, how are you today? Fine Amina, are you ready? Yes. Go ahead. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The Elafi Quraysh. Elafi him with little shita. It was sorry. But ya abdu rabbahal al bay. Aladi atamahum. Enjoying ma'amalahum in love. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Boys and girls, we go to next caller. She gets a gold badge. One us once again. Ali and Ibrahim, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Kaifa halak? Ana bi khair. Kaifa haluk anta? وأنا بخير الحمد لله كيف حالك يا إيمان شنو أن أرنر. they good they good علي who's first you or Ibrahim؟ إن شاء الله me and then followed by me is Ibrahim. go ahead علي. okay إن شاء الله. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان ر. Rajeem Bismillah 
هر رحمن الرحيم ليلى في قريش ليلى فيهم رحلة شتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب بحث البيت الذي أطعمهم من جوع وآمنهم من قول صدق الله العظيم well السلام عليكم إبراهيم Ibrahim, are you ready? Yes. How are you today? Yes. Alhamdulillah. How are you? Come closer to the phone, Ibrahim. Go ahead. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim لإلافي قريش إلافيهم رحلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البيت الذي عطأ من جوهم وآمن من خوف you gotta go back as well. Last call, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the show. Tafadali. Go ahead. I'm in the shaitan, you're ready. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Lila fi Quraysh. Lila fi Himri. Lita Shitai wa Saif. Fal yabudu Rabba hadha al bayt. Ullazi a'ama ummin ju'in wa amana hum min khaw. A quick feedback that would be. Allazi stretch. Boys and girls, this is going to be our final segment, inshallah ta'ala. Let's have a look at some beautiful drawings that we received from our students. The first one here is by Maryam Khan. This is from our weekly segment, Cool Muslim World. We can see that she put in some amazing effort there to draw, yes, all the information she can draw about Somalia. So we're gonna give her a gold badge, Maryam Khan. Amazing. She looked at the mosque, the population, all the information is there, including the food, yeah, and the bunny. Yalla, have a look at this one, guys. MashaAllah. Aisha Muhammad drawing name of Allah Al Alim. Ooh, mashaAllah, tabarakallah, boys and girls. This one here is truly, really, and truly beautiful. Keep it up, keep it up, Aisha there. Ha. Ooh, this one is by Saliha, mashaAllah. Look at that one, guys. Who's impressed? Well, Bonnie is impressed. Well, definitely an extraordinary badge. Yeah. Al Ali, name of Allah. Whoa, look at this one by Fatiha. Well, I think Fatiha will be able to do. I mean, no. Look at the colors, guys. Oh, I really love the colors. Extra Allah. The all knowing. Very, very nice. Ismail. Keep it up, Ismail. MashaAllah Tabarakallah. The unstoppable. MashaAllah. And here is the name of Allah Al Alim. And it looks like this is also by Aisha. Next one here is Maimuna. Yeah, looks like this is Maimuna. Well done. 
Well done, mashallah, tabarakallah. And Muhammad Thanaullah with all the notes there. May Allah bless you. Amazing. Now, whatever you have learned, keep those notes because on Sunday we have start of the week show. So if you learn something, you have a chance to win. You have a better chance of winning if you're attending our Monday to Friday shows. And of course, on Saturday, boys and girls, we have Madrasa TV Supercharge, where you can watch all the segments again, inshallah ta'ala, Saturday 10 a.m. So make sure you attend these shows, Saturday's show, and your chance of winning on Sunday is just going to go. Whoop. Well done to all of you. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. We'll be seeing you tomorrow at 4 p.m. until then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. La 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 la